So in today's video, we're going to take a look at OVN Kubernetes, which is the default CNI plugin for Red Hat OpenShift and OKD. So a CNI plugin is how your pods communicate with each other and the external network. It's necessary in, in Kubernetes for the pods to have that communication. If you're not familiar with OpenShift, then you may have heard of CNIs like Flannel, Calico, or Cilium. They are the CNI plugins that are available for Kubernetes. Um, traditionally, we've used OpenShift SDN in Red Hat OpenShift and OKD, and recently we switched to OVN Kubernetes as the def default. So I wanted to give you guys some information that you can use to debug um, issues or explore and learn how OVN works in, in uh, Red Hat OpenShift. So the first thing to understand that is that OVN was built out of the OVN, uh, out of the Open vSwitch project. So it used a lot of the same constructs like OpenFlow rules to determine how the packets are going to travel through the network. So if we take a look at um, what OVN is, which is here on the website. So here on the website, we see that OVN is a series of daemons for the Open vSwitch that translate virtual network configurations into OpenFlow. So OpenFlow um, itself is kind of like a smart layer 3 switch. It can do some routing, it can do VLANs, but are you going to replace your router with a layer 3 switch? You're probably not. You, you want to keep your router. So OVN provides that more advanced functionality. So it can do distributed virtual routers, distributed logical switches, ACLs, DHCP and DNS servers, for example. So traditionally in the OpenStack world, what we would do with Open vSwitch is we would have a network namespace and we would call that a queue router, for example. So all the NAT, um, the firewalling and everything would be handled within that um, network namespace. And similarly for DHCP, we would create another network namespace where we would run DNS mask and respond to DHCP requests. With Open um, Virtual Network, with OVN, we can do distributed virtual routing natively within logic flows, which consequently are open flows, and I'll show the relationship between them in a minute. We can also handle DHCP, DNS, etc. So if you have a pod or a virtual machine that sends out a DHCP request on the network, uh, sends out that broadcast looking for a DHCP address, there will be a logic flow rule that matches that packet, and it will respond, giving it a gateway, um, a DNS server, an IP address, etc. So about OVN Kubernetes, there's an about section on the 4.10 docs that I'll link to below, but it basically runs a daemon on each node. So we have daemon sets for the um, databases, daemon set for the OVN controller that run on every node, and then that programs open vSwitch on the nodes. This is the supported features. So we can do egress IPs, firewalls, routers, IPsec encryption, IPv6, network policy, network policy logs, hardware offloading, and multicast. So if we look at the OVN architecture, what happens is um, we have an OVN North bound database and that database stores objects. So logical routers, logical switches, load balances, NAT rules. Um, the North bound database speaks with North D and North D translates those objects into logic flow rules that are stored in the South bound database. The South bound database is a database representation of the infrastructure. So it contains your chassis. Every node in the cluster will be a chassis in the South bound database and we can see the ports that are then connected to it. It will also have all of the logic flows. So the logic flows are shared with the OVN controller process that runs on each node, and OVN controller turns that into open flow rules to program open vSwitch. Then your pods plug into open vSwitch. So if we take a look at the nodes, the first thing we need to do is change into the project OpenShift OVN Kubernetes. We do OC get all here. We'll see that we have the pods one OVN kube node pod for each node in the cluster. We have the three masters that run on our control plane nodes, and we have these two daemon sets to deploy them. So the first daemon set matches on the node role master. So then we have these three, and the next one matches on all of them. So we have one of these per node in the cluster. So OC get nodes. We have five. We have five nodes in the cluster. So we want to look at something like my unify pod, for example. The OY, we can see this is running on OCP worker zero. So if we do OC get PO OY, um, this one here is the one that runs on worker zero. We can do OC exec IT into that pod. 
OBS via CTR show. Now this is just showing the open V switch configuration on the node. So we can see here that we have two bridges, we have VRint and we have BRX. BRX contains the actual physical interface of that node and it contains a patch port into BRint. So traffic will come in through EMP1 and 0 onto this bridge, go through our patch port and onto the BRint which is our integration bridge. Once we're on BRint, we have a whole bunch of these ports. So these ports represent the pods in the environment. The pods plug directly into this integration bridge. Um, and then we have a bunch of other things here like, for example, the Geneve Tunnels. So Geneve Tunnels are just between the nodes. If the traffic needs to travel from Worker 0 to Control Plane 0, then it will go via one of the Geneve Tunnels here. So if we look at the ports on each of these, we can do OFCTL show BR int. So these are the ports on the integration bridge. So we can see each of our pods there. And then if we do dump flows on BRint, these are all of the open flow rules. Now, we're not going to go through all of these because there's quite a lot. If we have a look, there's 4,795 open flow rules, so a lot to go through. But it's important to understand that this is the path your packet takes when it leaves the pod. So if we pipe this to VI, we can see what happens is we we come in on an import. So for example, here we have import, this matches one of our pods. And then we have a whole bunch of things that need to happen for that, for, the, for that traffic to match that rule. Now, this is obviously really hard to understand and we have tools that I'm going to show you today that will help to work out where, what happens through these open flow rules. So we have one tool called um, AppCTL OF Prototrace and that allows you to provide a MAC address, an IP address, a source and destination MAC address, source and destination IP address, the type of traffic it is, and then simulate a packet through this network. Now, I actually did that in my previous video with OpenStack and the skills are directly transferable here, so I'm not gonna do it again because we have a much better tool in OVN Kubernetes in OpenShift that we can use to debug this. So I'm gonna show you that tool instead, but just know that exists and you can simulate that packet we're just going to do it through a different tool that I'll show you soon. So all of these open flow rules are programmed by the OVM controller based on logic flow rules. So to look at logic flow rules, we need to look at the northbound database first and understand what objects are there to see how they're translated into logic flow rules. So to look at the northbound database, what we want to do is we need to determine which of these nodes is the leader. So we do OC get PO. You see we have three. We need to know which one's the leader. So what we'll do is um, so we'll do OC exec into one of the pods, which is pick one of them at random, and we're going to go into the OVN curve master container. We're going to run OVS app CTL dash T and give it the northbound database control socket and ask about the cluster status for the OVN northbound database. So when we run that, we can see it tells us that the leader is 5408. If we look in our servers, we can see that 5408 is the one on IP address 172.20.041. We do OC get nodes, dash O wide. We can see that 41 is control plane 1. So what we want to do is OC get PO dash O wide and find the one running on control plane 1, which is this one. So to get information from that node, what we would do is OC exec IT OVN Kube master C into the north D container this time, OVN MBCTL show. And this will show all the objects in the northbound database. Now here we have a whole bunch of NAT rules that are on routers, and we have logical switches, and we have load balancers. So let's just look at each of them individually. So LR list will give us our routers. We can see there we have a router on each node plus an OVN cluster router. Look at the logical switches. We can see there that we have an EXT uh, switch for each node, a join switch, and then just a switch with the, with the node name itself. And if we do LB list, which is load balancer list, we can see that we have a bunch of load balancers. Now, uh, load balancers in, in OVN Kubernetes are representations of services. So we look at these two for example, we can see this is a unifier one. 
on ports 10001 UDP and 3478 UDP. So if I do OC get SVC in the Unify namespace, we can see we have this service here which is a cluster IP and we can see 10001 and 3478 are defined in this one, which are represented here. And everything else is obviously represented there as well, but just understand that services are represented in OVN as load balances. Now we know about the objects in the northbound database, but how does traffic actually flow through those objects? Well, we have this diagram. So what we can see here is that traffic coming from the network hits our physical interface on the node and then goes into our um, external interface, BRX, that we just looked at. From there, we go into the EXT logical switch. So when we did the LS list here, we can see that we have this EXT switch. So we take a look at this one. So we'll do a show on that object. We can see that that switch has a router port in it. So ETOR GR OCP worker zero. So let's take a look at what happens next. So we SNAT into our gateway router into GR and then the node name. So okay, here's GR and the node name. So let's take a look at our routers then. LR list. GR and the node name, which is this one. So we'll do a show on that. So we can see on that router, there is a bunch of NAT rules in place and a few, a few more ports that are configured here. So what happens after we go through that, that router? Well, then we go to our join switch. So if we have a look at the switches again, We have this join switch. So we take a look at this one. On our join switch, we can see that we have ports for all of the routers. Now we have this port here, which is for the OVN cluster router. So what we want to do is go back to our flow diagram and see what happens next. So we go into that cluster router. So let's take a look at that cluster router then. So we will do a show on the OVN cluster router. We can see on the cluster router we have these RTOS and RTOJ um, ports for the routers on each of the corresponding nodes within our cluster. So in our case, this is the one of interest to us. So we will just take a mental note here that we have a MAC address the networks that it covers, and a gateway chassis. The gateway chassis will be important soon, but let's finish our flow diagram for now. So the next thing that happens is we go into a logical switch that is named after our node. So we go back and we do the ls list again. We see that we have this logical switch that is just named after our node. So we do a show on this one. We can see that we have the ports for all of our pods, and we can see here here's the pod for our here's the port for our, our unify pod. So we do OC get PO O wide and unify. We can see 10, 128, 247, 10, 128, So that's the port as it plugs into the logical switch um, on the node. So we can see there the pod plugs directly into that switch. Sends its traffic via the cluster router to the logical switch, to the gateway router, to the logical switch, and out, out the interface that way. So that's great, but that doesn't tell us how, like looking at this output in my terminal doesn't tell us how the traffic flows. What will actually tell us how it flows is the logic flow rules. And to look at that, we need to look at the southbound database. So let's take a look at our cluster router again for a second. So we note this this gateway chassis ID. Okay, so we're going to do an SBCTL show. And we can see here that the chassis is this one here. So that matches our chassis ID and it has ports on it for those routers. Okay, so the gateway chassis indicates that traffic will flow to this node and from this node into the pod. That's what the gateway chassis is all about. It can also flow from this node out into the network. So if we do a dump flows here, we can see very similar to the open flow rules that we dumped before, but in this case we have data paths, right? 
So we have this data path here for a VN cluster router in the pipeline egress. So we'll just do a quick grab for data path. So we can see there that there's all these different data paths and in these different pipelines, ingress and egress pipelines. So in this case, the logic flow rules are broken into these data paths, right? So traffic coming into them will match its own set of rules. But again, this is an arduous process to read through these. Um, and you know, you're probably never going to get to the point you want to get to troubleshooting if you're just reading these rules. So what we have is we have this tool called OVN Kube Trace. And what it's going to do is it's going to run OVN Trace and the um, OF Proto Trace and OVN D Trace and just co correlate all that information and give it to us in one handy output. It also allows us to not use like MAC addresses and IP addresses and instead use Kubernetes namespaces and pods, which is obviously more consumable for people that are familiar with, with Kubernetes. Okay, so I'm back at several hours later now, but now we need to look at OVN Kube Trace. So we've seen that reading through open flow rules and logic flow rules is quite an arduous task, and we wouldn't want to do that manually because we're not going to be able to interpret all of them correctly to know where that packet's going. So we have tools that will help us do that. And in this case, the tool we're going to be looking at is called OVN Kube Trace. So OVN Kube Trace combines OVN Trace, OVS App CTL, OF Proto Trace that we spoke about before, and OVN D Trace to and from both directions from your source and destination pods in the cluster. So what we can pass in here is Kubernetes native constructs like the namespaces, the pods, services, um, things that you're familiar with from a Kubernetes perspective. So you don't need to go and figure out the MAC address and the IP address of the destination nodes and the ICMP type and all that kind of information. It's really sticking to what you already know in a Kubernetes world. So um, first thing we need to do is get a copy of this binary, right? So to get a copy of the binary, there's a few commands we can run. So first of all, we'll just save a pod variable and I'll leave all these below so that you can just copy and paste. Then we want to copy the OVN curve trace binary onto our local node. And then we want to make that executable. So this is um, the easiest way to do it. There's obviously other ways to get this, but if you're already running an OpenShift cluster and you're trying to debug OVN Kubernetes in OpenShift, then you might as well just get the binary this way. It's, it's super simple. It makes life super simple. So now we've got the binary, what we want to do is we want to run the OVN Kube Trace command. So we are going to test that DNS resolution works from my Unify pod talking to the core DNS pods that run in the cluster. Obviously, you can do this with other services. If you've got your applications deployed and you want to troubleshoot connectivity between your applications, you would just replace the, the various things like the namespace and the pod that you want to test and the port. So in this case, I'm doing UDP 53 because that is DNS, but you might do TCP 443 if you want to test HTTP or some kind of API endpoint. So what we do is we run OVN Kube Trace, give it the source namespace, the source pod within that namespace, destination namespace, destination pod, the protocol, so UDP in this case, destination port 53, and we'll do it with log level zero to start with. So when we run this, this is just gonna tell us, should that traffic work? So this is the first test we, we wanna run, right? So here we can see OVS Trace indicates a success from DNS to Unify, so the response traffic should work. So here's the initial one. I, I skipped it, sorry. So OVN trace indicates success from Unify to the DNS pod. And then it indicates that it's successful going back in the other direction. So we know we have bi-directional traffic on UDP 53 if my Unify pod wants to do DNS resolution from core DNS. So if that didn't work though, how do we get the OVN trace and the app proto trace and, and everything else? So we go to this last argument, this log level zero, and we change that to log level two. This will give us the entire output from OVN trace, app proto trace, OVN D trace. This is a lot of information. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at the first few um, objects that are returned here so that you know how to interpret this data, but we're not gonna read all of it because obviously this is an astronomical amount of data. We'll go through the first few and then you'll be fine to interpret the rest on your own should you want to. So this last one here, we can see this is the output from OVS app CTL OF proto trace. 
So that's just showing on the left hand side we're looking at the table numbers, so table 16, table 17, 18, 19, etc. Then as we scroll up, we where again this is at Prototrace running on BRint. Um, as we get higher we'll start to get into the OVN stuff. So now we're coming out of oh yep, yeah, so here's the um, the OVN stuff now. So we'll, we'll keep going up and we will get to the very top and we'll talk through the very first few outputs and then everything else you, you can interpret based on that information. So here we can see we run the command and it gets all this information for us. So this is the information you would normally provide to uh, OVM Trace. You would need the source MAC address, destination MAC address, source IP, destination IP, the, the uh, TCP source port, TCP destination, TTL, all of that. So it's OVN Kube Trace is a super handy command that's doing all that for you. So the very first thing output is an ingress pipeline on the OCP worker zero data path coming in on the import unify, unify and the, and the pod port. So we looked at that, that is attached to our um, OCP worker zero logical switch in OVN. We saw that port there earlier. So what we do is we go through and make sure we've got a match on the MAC address in the L2 lookup table which which works we do we do have a, a match on that MAC address it matches our pods and the next thing we want to do is look up the IP so we can see that we're matching on the source MAC address and the source IP address so those match so we proceed to the next table so we can see 0 1 next table for us is table 5 here um, table 6 then the last thing we do here is uh, make sure we're matching on IPv4, it's UDP, so in that case we save some things to the registers and then we move that packet into the contract workflow, so contract within within networking being connection tracking, so we need to track that packet because it's going to be routed. When it comes back it's going to have a different destination IP address and then that needs to be swapped out and sent back through, so we need the contract rules in place. So that's the next thing that happens, we send it to the contract workflow and this packet is now being contract and sent on the outport store OCP worker zero. So then we move into the egress pipeline. So now we're leaving the worker node. We're coming in on the import and the outport being store OCP worker zero. So we go through, we make sure that it's not a new contract connection because we've been contract here. So now we shouldn't be doing a new contract. We're checking that it's an established contract session. It's not a contract uh, repeat and the contract label blocked is equal to zero so we're not blocking on this traffic and once that's fine we're going to patch it through to the to the um, OVN router so we can see here now we're looking at the ingress pipeline into the data path for the OVN cluster router because we're coming into this data plane now um, and we're coming in on the import RTOS OCP worker zero and that's the one we saw before so this is all routing information so you can see here in table 11 we decrement the TTL, so we're removing um, one digit from the, the TTLs, it's from 64 to 63, just like you would in any normal routing environment. We are setting the IP registers, so the IPv4 destination is going into register 0, register 1 is equal to 10.128.0.1, so the router, and we're changing the Ethernet source of this packet, so the MAC address of the packet, to the MAC address that matches our router, and then we're sending it on the outport. RTOS OCP CTL plane zero. So that's the routing portion of it. So now we know the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to be going out this port. So we're moving into the ingress for the uh, data plane OVN cluster router. So this was ingress. Now we're moving into the egress. We're going to leave the router. Coming in on the import RT RTOS OCP worker zero and leaving on the port. RTOS OCP control plane zero. Control plane zero is where that DNS pod lives. And then it gets ingressed into the data plane OCP control plane zero on the import store OCP control plane zero. So you can see how we're now reversing. We're going, we just left the worker node, now we're going into the control plane node. And we reverse that process. Um, and then for the contract, we make sure that all the contract information is established so that we can then send that packet back. So we come through here, we check for the outport being the OpenShift DNS port, the destination being the MAC address of the DNS port, the IP destination is equal to 10.128.0.12, so the, the IP address of our pod, 
Um, then we go down here to the ingress. So now we're ingressing into the pod itself. So we're coming on the data plane OCP control plane zero into the import, which now matches the port of our DNS pod. So just the reverse of what we did before and the contract uh, table again to contract the reverse connection. And then you can see that it reverses again, coming back to the other node. So based on that information, you can go through and, and read the rest of them and interpret them from there, as you should be fine. So that log level two is how we can get the detailed output from the OVN trace and the app proto trace and OVN D trace. In, in most cases, unless there's something blocking your traffic, it should be sufficient to just run that with log level zero. So again, just change those destination ports and the protocol to anything that matches your application that you're trying to troubleshoot. And this should give you a good high level summary of whether or not that should work. If it doesn't work, then yeah, you might want to go into it and it will show you exactly which flow is dropping that traffic and that might prompt you to think, oh, that's right, I set up that, that egress rule that doesn't allow that or I set up that ingress rule that doesn't allow that. Um, it should give you a good indication of where your next step is in troubleshooting that. So I wouldn't expect that everyone will remember everything we've talked about here today. The, the main thing is that you know that this exists because if you know that it exists, then you can troubleshoot it. If you don't know it exists, you don't know where to start, you don't know what you can and can't troubleshoot. And it gets really difficult, really complicated, and quite overwhelming because it's quite a steep learning curve if you're only familiar with traditional like Cisco networking, for example, and then you try and work with OVN, it, it can be overwhelming. So the idea is that, you know, if you are trying to troubleshoot an issue, you will go, oh, that's right, the packet needs to first traverse open flow on the node. And you can start there. It gives you something to start troubleshooting. So the main takeaways are really um, knowing that you have a northbound database and that northbound database contains objects that define your network, routers, switches, load balancers, NAT rules. Um, in the OpenStack world, particularly, we're looking at DHCP and DNS and things which aren't so much of a thing in OpenShift at the moment. They might be in the future. Just keep in mind that those kind of abstractions are all handled within the northbound database where it holds objects that represent them. From there, there's a, a daemon called NorthD and it runs and it takes information from the northbound database and turns it into logic flow rules that are then stored in the um, southbound database which is a representation of your infrastructure. It's got the chassis, so every node in the cluster will be a chassis. You can do a SPCTL show and see those chassis and see the ports that are attached to the chassis, which in our case was just all of the router ports. And anything that runs with like host networking is going to appear on that. Um, your pods communicate out to the wider network. They're all using, they're all using SNAP, so they all source NAT. Their IP address is translated into the IP address of the node that the pod is running on and then sent out into the network. So they're using SNAP by default. If you have um, services, which you probably indefinitely will, those are represented as load balancers within the OVN northbound database. That southbound database has, in, a, in addition to the, the chassis, it has all of the logic flows. And those logic flows are then sent to the OVN controller process running on each of the nodes that translates them into open flow rules and ultimately programs open vSwitch so that your pods can then follow open flow rules and make it out of the network. So they're the key things to remember. It's obviously a lot to take on board. I have gone into more detail as well in the, in the OpenStack video, which was a little bit longer, but the skills and the concepts are transferable between anything that runs OVN. If you're using charmed OpenStack and it's running OVN, then the, the skills that and the information I'm giving you here is relevant to that environment as well. It's just how OVN works. So I hope that you can take that away and it makes your experience with OVN better, makes you more confident using OVN and understanding how it works. And as always, if you have any questions, I'm happy to tackle them in the comments below. And um, we might take a look at the, the Kubernetes side of this in a separate video where we have the cluster network operator that's in charge of managing the life cycle of the CNI. It manages the daemon sets, for example, so you can't just change the daemon set and have that applied because it's going to be overwritten by your operator. So maybe we'll tackle the cluster network operator in a separate video and look at some of the things that we can tune and change about the, the OVN Kubernetes environment in a separate video. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that was informative and let me know if you have any questions.